Today's video is brought to you by Magback, the maker of an ingenious, nearly invisible solution for DIY curb rash repair and protection. I'm on Twitter. Oh yeah, he, he does Twitter too. Yeah. You do Twitter? <laughs> yeah, I, th I mean, it's cool hanging out, Greg. I didn't know you had other <laughs> friends in town. Like, uh, uh, are you who is this clown? He showed up in a Rivian. Here today with a special guest, as you can see behind me, needs no introduction, but of course, this is Jeebs. Pulled off the side of the road, literally, to fill. We've been, we've been trying to start this video multiple times, and we've had several people pull over. You know, there's all kinds of things. Here we go. Now, it's not mine, but our buddy uh, let us borrow it. This is mine, the Rivian's mine. Okay. So, customize it afterwards. Um, but I, I do think it looks good. What the f God, I'm wearing yellow. <laughs> I'm gonna have to finish this video shirtless. Yeah, we're gonna, it's gonna fly in a second here. Yeah, thank you. We're in the middle of nowhere right now. There's people coming out of the woodwork. Lance like Armstrong everywhere. Stops. Like somebody, Lance. somebody just posted Show on Lance Facebook. Show Lance Armstrong over there. Somebody just uh, posted on Facebook so that, yeah. you know, we've got all kinds of stuff going on here. Like, what is happening? I don't know how people are finding us, but it is like nonstop. People are coming, they're like hanging out in this intersection. There's nothing out here. Where are they coming from? This truck, it just brings everybody out. Oh, yours is better. Oh, dude, nice Rivian. Dude, I would never drive a Rivian. I don't know what. I don't really like anything about it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fat lie. No, my favorite thing is like the, the light bar from the looks insane like i love how that looks it's so clean um like the, the body lines on the front of the car are very good it, it's surprising because like if there's any car that pick, will do it justice it's absolutely the cyber truck yeah because even though i've seen it in person when i see pictures of it i'm still like oh that doesn't look that it just doesn't take in um how nice it is it's it's really cool have you Greg ever heard anybody or seen anybody so depressed about their truck purchase as Jeeves? It's not been so aggressive until this morning after we've picked this thing back up and been able to see how it looks now. Like he's, he's, he's driving so aggressive that I think he's purposely trying to wreck his car to get the insurance to <laughs> get like, total it. <laughs> I'm, I'm done with both of you. She said, what? <laughs> what in tarnation? She's calling the police. Did y'all see that? <laughs> yes. Ma'am, we are the police. Oh, big brother, Hunter Ridge Line. Oh yeah. That's it, right there. Brother? The OG cyber truck right there. Uh, anyways, Jeeves is here. We're here to talk about trucks today because it's been a week of trucks on the channel. And that's pretty cool because this is kind of like that next area where we're seeing a lot of progress. And trucks are a big important piece of the automotive market. We just raced across the country with four of the EV trucks you can buy today to see who is the winner. And uh, I can't divulge that here. You'll have to check that video out on its own. But I drove the Silverado EV on that trip and uh, I had a lot of thoughts and feelings about it. I've driven the F-150. I am actually borrowing a Rivian that was on the race, uh, just like Ben's right here. I'm driving that across country as well. And then of course, the cyber truck right behind me so you've had your truck now for about three months right yep so it's a good time to really like wrap up what your ownership experience has been like and you've been in this particular cyber truck um and kind of what your thoughts are on that compared to how your rivian has been yeah so my thoughts with the cyber truck have always been they're lucky that they have um, Tesla's R&D over the past 10, 12 years that they're ahead. So they were able to implement having the really nice throttle response, having the excellent charging network out there that makes it um, very easy to drive from point A to point B. You're not worried about will this next charger work and all that. So I think that's great. The concern I had was this is going to be an expensive truck. Is the price going to match the quality? That was my concern. And riding in this thing is incredible. Like it feels like I had one of the press cars I had this year was a Range Rover plug-in hybrid. It rides just as good as that. The, the suspension is very flush. I mean, everything about it is excellent. Um, whereas in the Rivian, still a, a nice luxury vehicle to drive, but the suspension, the air suspension surprisingly um, isn't as tight. It's not 
as well put together. But this, in my opinion, offers something that the Cybertruck doesn't. This is like a more, people keep telling me, they're like, congrats, you bought a Honda Ridgeline. I'm like, guys, would you give me a break for a minute? I didn't know the Honda Ridgeline had 800 horsepower and went zero to 60 in three and a half seconds, okay? Yeah, so I, I think it's great. And like, for me, I'm not like a traditional, I guess, truck person, so I play golf, okay? Just unlock it. Little Say, things like this. This is an issue. So I'm stint. There it goes. Now, for Random. some reason, it opened up. So uh, there's little things like that where Tesla has the edge because they've been doing it for a longer time. Keeping your Tesla looking great doesn't just start and stop with keeping the paint protected. It also needs to have a focus on protecting the wheels. Tesla offers some very nice wheel options for upgrade, but it doesn't solve the biggest problem, which is that the tires themselves are about as narrow as they possibly can be to fit these wheels. And of course, that's for efficiency purposes, but this means that the wheels can actually be farther out than the tire itself which is why curb rash is so common on Teslas. If you are like the many curb rash Teslas out there, there is an easy DIY fix for this that will cover the curb rash, but it'll also protect the wheels from further damage. Rim case from Magback is an ingenious solution to not only protect your wheels from curb rash, but also blend in so that they're nearly invisible. So whether you have the 20 inch induction wheels on your Model Y or the Uber turbines on your Model 3 or Model Y, Magback has you covered with the rim case. Make sure to visit Magback's website to get your rim case for 15% off using code BTG15. Thanks again to Magback for sponsoring today's video. So we have this gear tunnel here. I put my golf clubs in here. Um, so it has features like this that I don't need the full size um, of the cyber truck. I can use this for golf clubs. It's a little easier to maneuver, even though that has four wheel steering, the turning radius is way better. They're just different. Um, they offer different things. And people say that's not a truck because the bed isn't X amount of sizes. Well, a Chevy S10 is a truck, an 18 wheeler is a truck. It all depends on um, kind of what you're looking for. So I can appreciate both of them. Uh, I got this on a lease. Um, and then, you know, making YouTube content, this is the one to have right now because that's where all the attention is at. Um, but ultimately they're, they're both, they're both excellent and they have access to Tesla's network. So that's helpful. No, I mean, really the Rivian R1S would have been a little bit better, but they didn't have the lease option at the time. And I didn't want to lock into something for too long. It's been, uh, it has useful features. Like I know I keep talking about the gear tunnel and playing golf. That's just me specifically. But that's really appealing. So I don't want to have my bet, my truck, my clubs in the trunk here when it's 120 degrees outside. So like little things like this makes a lot of sense for me. And then I'm not laying stuff in the back seat. Can still use the back seat. So there's, you know, there's all kinds of things. Here we go. Yours, it's not mine. Our buddy uh, let us borrow it. This is mine. The Rivian's mine. Okay. So yeah. So we're just filming with it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, that's all right. I've never seen one. I know. Yeah. This is only the third one in Arizona. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. How's, how's it open? Uh, there's like a little uh, button here. Press this. Like what colors does it come with? Yeah. There's just the one color, that stainless mm. steel. Yeah. We got this wrapped. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Take a yeah, no problem. That's very awesome. Yeah. Okay. No, you might as well take your look while you can because it's yeah. they're rare right now. Yeah. It doesn't look 42 years old. Yeah, I bought it brand new. Wow. How do you like your Rivian? It's great. Yeah. I've had no issues. So I've had it for about three months and it's been yeah. fun. Cool yeah. So for lifestyle, the Rivian works really well for you and that's great. But you also like the Cybertruck, right? Yeah. No, I, I like both of them. I mean, I just, I don't have access to it. I wouldn't be able to get one of these for like two years. Um, so I, I equally like them because I can appreciate how good Tesla's software is. And we're just at the beginning of this. So the software updates that are going to be coming with this is probably going to be acceleration boost. I'm sure they will edit the uh, the suspension over time. One of the software updates in the Rivian was they added um, a moderate feeling to the air suspension. So now it has soft, moderate, and hard. So the power of software in these is remarkable. And that's something where I think the Chevy lacks, I think the Ford lacks. They don't know how to do that, but you go home, connect your Wi-Fi, and you got more features. That's crazy. These are both vertically integrated. This is vertically integrated. Well, they both have proprietary charging networks which is so important and that is a problem. And also, I'm not a hater of Ford and shit. I'm, I'm not, I'm open to whatever. I'm not like full on Tesla or full on Rivian. I just, I review the cars. I buy things that I feel that I like and I share my opinions of them. I, I'm not in one camp or the other. I, I think there's a, 
uh, I think these two are at the top. That's my opinion on that. But I, I think the other ones eventually will, will fall in line. And range is actually listed at least pretty similar between these two trucks. This one's 341. So and this, this is, yeah. I guess with the 20s, this one's 319, I believe. How has your range experience been in the Rivian? And what are your expectations in the Cybertruck? Um, in the Rivian, so I own a Model Y as well, for anyone that doesn't know. And that's always been like, I don't, I feel like I'm not getting anywhere near the mileage I should be getting. Um, this, I feel like it's just kind of dead on to whatever it says you're going to get. Um, also, when you put it into performance mode, for example, that locks it into all wheel drive and you're, it reflects a reduced range. Um, so I think the range on this uh, at 341 miles is excellent and I feel like I get it in the real world. I think that with the new EPA rollout and with a bunch of people complaining about it online, I think it will actually be fairly accurate. Um, I haven't tested it yet. I feel like some people have, I don't know. Um, but I feel like it's, it's going to be better. I think the new Model 3 is going to be that way and hopefully that's in Tesla's past. How do you feel comfort wise between the two? I think this is a little more comfortable. Um, I just think that it, like I said, I, it feels like that Land Rover Mercedes Benz quality in terms of the suspension and how it all comes together, the quietness of the cabin. Um, this feels a little bit more comfortable. Um, I love the seats in it. They both have heated and cooled seats. So I, yeah, I, I think this is very probably the most comfortable car Tesla makes right now, I think. You mentioned that had you had the opportunity to get an R1S instead of the R1T, you would have. Um, still same size though on the inside for like uh, width, you just add that third row, maybe a little bit more leg room in the second row. How do you feel about the size of the interior of the Cybertruck versus um, your R1T? This is already hard to fit in my garage. I have to run it right up to the, like the stop of the curb. So I, I would have to park this up on the the curb in my garage so that would be a problem for me i think the um the space in here isn't bad but i mean you put a car seat uh my wife and i are both six feet tall so if you put a car seat behind the passenger seat they're slightly cramped it's not that bad whereas in the model y like you are cramped this has a little bit more space um so you'd be able to fit easier in here so this is certainly bigger on the the cabin and the bed and everything so it's nice but do you have the space to put it in the garage? Do you want to park this outside? That's what you have to decide. And then one of the things that Rivian actually, in my opinion, does a great job is colors. I mean, this is limestone. It's my favorite color that Rivian makes. Although the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth place like are all awesome colors. What do you think about the color options on the uh, Cybertruck? So, Which color that they offer is your favorite? <laughs> There's one. Um, yeah, I, I think it's... It's unique that this car is offered in one color. I don't know that I know of another vehicle that's offered in one color, so that's very cool. Gives you the ability to wrap this and make it your own, so that's great. One thing Tesla, I, I think Tesla overcharges for their colors. They're very basic and they cost as much as premium colors from Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, BMW. So I think they should bring the cost of those down. So that way people aren't like, oh, I'm just gonna take the free color and then every Tesla's white or gray or whatever the free color is. But this is so unique and cool. It looks cool in the stainless steel and it gives you options to customize it afterwards. Um, but I, I do think it looks good. What the f God, I'm wearing yellow. <laughs> I'm gonna have to finish this video shirtless. I called it mustard yellow, which <laughs> I've been corrected. It's Dijon. Dijon yeah. yellow. You're getting a Cybertruck and it's here. Are you wrapping it? And if so, what color are you going with? I mean, matte black's tough. I, I kind of like the chrome black, matte white. I mean, I've done pink in the past. Sure and, have. You know, people were like, is this what men are these days? Pink car. I'm like, it was a gender reveal. Relax. Stop arguing the comments. So <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. I, there's so many, op maybe a deep pur dark purple would be cool. Um, yeah, there's, I'd have to I'd have to think more about that. Orange for Halloween. Your favorite thing about the Rivian that the Cybertruck does not do? The gear tunnel. For me personally, that's a big deal because I can, uh, back to golf, subscribe to Jeeves Golf, um, plug it. And uh, yeah, yeah that, I'm cutting that out yeah. completely. <laughs> to me, I think that's a really uh, well thought out thing. Makes the car more ergonomic. Your favorite thing about the Cybertruck that the Rivian does not offer? Four foot blade, right? <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I won't even let my wife look at that. Um, but yeah, so as far as the- uh, This is a family channel, let's keep it clean. Oh, your family channel? All right, we'll keep it clean. Uh, yeah, so as far as the Cybertruck goes, the overall design of it, 
him and I, Justin and I have been trying to like quietly film here. We've had what, five, six oh people. Oh my gosh, it's insane. It's crazy. So the futuristic design of it, it looks better in person. Even that I've, even though I've seen it in person, when I see pictures of it or video of it online, I'm like, oh, it doesn't look that great. In person, it's very cool. The proportions are well done. Uh, the front end along here looks great. Um, so they, yeah, they just did a really nice job with it. Again, access to Tesla supercharger network, software updates. It has heated, cooled seats, the steer by wire. So, and that, and that you have to drive it to understand. When I drove this for the first time, got back in my Rivian, I was like, oh, it's like delayed. And this is so sharp. And I'm sure there will be updates to that that come over time. So their overall uh, exterior design of it, they took a huge risk and it seems to be paying off so far. What do you think about pricing of EV trucks? So I think the key is with, with EVs in general and the issue that we're gonna be, we're heading into or maybe in right now is if you're gonna build an EV, it can't be because the government wants us to go green. You have to be building cars that people are proud of and want to drive. So people want to drive this because it looks different. It has cool features on the inside. People want to drive the Rivian because the, it has a charging network. It's great. It's great off-road um, and has a, a unique look to it. So people naturally want to buy these, uh, not because they're electric, but because they are cool vehicles, just like any gas car that you would purchase. I think that's the key to it. And yes, the price needs to come down significantly um, on these. Now, on the cars, I guess, for, you know, the Model 3 is down now significantly below the average price of a new car in the US. So that's great. Um, but these companies ha are taking a loss, a lot of them. I think Rivian lost $40,000 per car um, in Q4 of last year. So that's not sustainable, uh, but over time, hopefully they overcome that. They're able to be, be more profitable and sell them at a lower price. Is the F-150 the lowest entry level EV truck? You have more access to pro trims than yeah. you did before. Yeah, that, I think that's the biggest concern. If you want people to try them, they can't be starting at 70, 80, $90,000. They have to be starting at 50. They still have to have good range and they still have to charge fast. Yes. They can't, they, they can't sacrifice. Right. right? I, I, one of the Mercedes I drove had like a max charging speed of like a hundred kilowatts. And you're like, what is this? You know, if you're going to pay that much, they have to deliver to what this can do and what the Rivian can do and all of that, it's all important. And what do you think the solution is for our charging, I guess, gap that we have? It's real, it's today, it is still an issue as far, for like, non-Teslas to travel. Yeah, so there needs to be standardization, which they're pretty We're much is on. now. We're working yep. on NA NACS plugs. Um, and it just needs to be like a gas station. You need to be, um, I think I saw recently that gas pumps can't pump faster than 10 gallons per minute. Um, so having standardization, like when you, when you full put gas in a car, you never ever in your life thought, how fast is this gas going to go in here? Is it, is this pump going to, it has to be thoughtless, you know, like Tesla and Rivian's chargers are great. You plug them in and it starts to charge. It has to be like that across the board for everything, not fumbling for a credit card or something like that. It, um, it just needs to be seamless and easy for people. When you stop at public charging, like Electrify America, it's usually four stalls. If you're lucky, it's eight. Most of the time, it's four parking spots for those eight stalls. There's always a car taking the fastest possible charger that can't access it. Why should this Mach-E owner know that he's doing something wrong? Yeah. Right? Is it the consumer's problem? Or like, or do we need to make this so dumb? Like, you don't have to think, like what you were just talking about. That's a big problem. Yeah, and I'll, I've also seen, you know, see, I see people uh, complain. They're like, hey, uh, this guy's charging up to 100%. Okay. He should, I fill my gas car up to 100%. You, right. There shouldn't be, uh, so there's these little things that people can say, oh, I don't want to do that because I can't fill it up to, hey, I can't, I can't argue with you there. I'm not going to tell you one way or the other. Um, yeah, it, it's, there's these little things we need to overcome and they need to be, we we'll see, we'll see. Money. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I also think the cyber truck in a lot of ways is going to bridge the gap between I would, you know, truck owners say I'd never own an EV either. I've seen a lot of people say how cool it is and things like that. So I think that's a good step forward. Like I was talking about the gas analogy earlier. Um, people never think about how fast the gas pump is pumping. They learning that, oh, this charger doesn't go as fast as this one. And if I plug it in at home, it takes five days to charge. It's like, well, yes, on this speed of plug, if you don't have this plug, there's a, there's a lot at play there and, av and the average person doesn't care. Yeah. Um, 
you're watching my channel or his channel. We're, we're into this. Every day we're talking about it, learning about it. It's very easy. But if you don't care about your car that much, this is probably annoying at first. Um, and then you come to love it because you never have to go to a gas station. You plug in at home. And then when you do your road trips, it's the infrastructure is getting better. Can you uh, answer the question once and for all with the facts? Is Rivian going bankrupt tomorrow? I keep hearing from the community that Rivian is going bankrupt. They're yeah. going to die. I, I, uh, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Um, yeah, I, I don't think Rivian is going bankrupt simply because their product has the it factor. Um, it's exciting people uh, that normally wouldn't be excited in a car. That's what Tesla did really well. They made vehicles that accelerate really fast. You can charge them and drive them everywhere. Um, and it's fun to drive. So as far as um, the Rivian goes, I think they have a product and brand that's strong enough to overcome um, their losses right now. I think they're going to be fine in the future. Plus, with the release of the R2 and the more affordable models, um, I think Rivian is going to be fine. Did you pre-order R2? I did. Yeah. I don't so know that I'll actually take delivery, but I just you know didn't want to feel uh, left out, right? You have unlimited funds. What EV are you buying today? A plug-in Prius? Yeah, probably that plug-in Prius. Definitely a hybrid of some kind, Definitely right? that hybrid, because I want the best of both worlds, baby. I, I want to get oil changes and plug it in. Ooh, ooh, I know what I'd get. I'd get the... Uh, what's that? Yeah, we're gonna. It's gonna fly in a second here. We j just to, thank you too. Just to put this into perspective, we're in the middle of nowhere right now. There's people coming out of the woodwork, Lance like Armstrong everywhere. Like somebody, Lance. somebody just posted Show on Lance Face Armstrong over there. Somebody just uh, posted on Facebook so that yeah. you know we've got all kinds of stuff going on here. Like, what is happening? So unlimited funds. I'm buying a uh, Porsche, 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 Porsche. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Everyone gets upset. Um, Tycon uh, GTS Sport Turismo. Ooh. Love that wagon. Okay. Pop a picture up so they know. Yeah, we'll put a picture up. Yeah. So you do have limited funds, but I'm not gonna tell you what the cap is. So you can, It's this is most people who are trying to buy the, the Cybertruck right now. They would have never spent 100 grand yes. on a truck. So you would never have spent 100 grand on a car. Funds are tight, like you're trying to take care of your family. Mm -hmm. You know, you could probably swing it, but you're talking picking up an Uber shift, right? So okay. what are you buying? In the EV world. In the EV world. I'm probably gonna buy a used Model Y. Uh, the reason I say that is because you have a great warranty and a proven platform. Um, so you have the four year, 50,000 mile warranty on the Model Y. And on the long range, you have eight year, 120,000 mile warranty on the battery. So as long as you know those parameters, you can buy them for the low 30s. You have the great charging network. So this doesn't just have to be in a round town car. And you have something with service centers all over the US. They're just the furthest ahead. So if I'm telling someone who's going to go out and spend their hard earned money, I'm telling you that out of uh, like caution for you, because a lot of these other companies, I, I know VW ID4 owners have had issues with software where the cars at the dealer for multiple months. And that could be the minority of the problems. All the negativity rises to the top on the Internet. So you have to be aware of that. But ultimately, like as far as your safe bet, that's what I would go with. Like coincidence, yeah, like clockwork. Like, did you do that? You did that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I planted them. You're trying to look good on my They're channel. They're plant. Look at you. So a lot to talk about with electrification. We're in this weird period of time where the economy has people kind of second guessing these purchases and we're coming out of the spending revolution that happened in 2021 where you couldn't buy things fast enough. So we're at that point where now we gotta start thinking about price again and we gotta start thinking about value in these vehicles and which one's gonna fit my purposes best? And that's a really good reason why he has both a Tesla and a Rivian, right? Yeah. So he's he's found things that fit in his life well, and we're getting our chance to finally drive these Cybertrucks and get a feel for, is this thing going to be a good value? And I think once Foundation Series is no longer required, I think then we're starting to talk again, we're talking 79,990, tax credit, all that stuff, so. yeah. So, Jeebs, thanks for uh, hanging out with us. Yeah, and, man, thank uh, you. Good seeing you. Yeah, we'll catch you guys next time.